you basically don't need any like real estate agent or relocation agency to find you a place because there are plenty of groups on Facebook or there are plenty of websites. But if you do it without some help, uh, it might be pretty complicated for you to check that you sign a contract with a le- real landlord and that you will get all the documents which you need for your visas. Because in, in many cases, especially if you are renting a room just from someone, it usually is not even the landlord or the owner, it's usually just some of the tenants already living there. So they are not, if you are outside EU, they are not able to give you the proof of accommodation you need. Uh, if you want to freelance in Prague, if you want to get the trade license, you will also need a consent about the business address. And if you don't meet the landlord, uh, that might be it, it might get you in a big trouble. Rents in Prague are higher than in the rest of the Republic, but it's the same in like every other country. The capital city is always the most expensive. To give you some like idea, uh, let's say rooms. If you want to rent just a room in a shared apartment, they start at like six thousand crowns. If if you want to live somewhere in suburbs, uh, if you want to live closer to the city center, you need to count at least with like. 10, 12, 13,000. Uh, no, like 10, 10 to 12 would be for a room. Uh, studios start at about like 9,000 in suburbs and go up to like 13, even 15 in the city center. But it's like, it's not worth it probably, not worth the location. But if you want to have a good studio uh, in a good location, so at least 12, 13,000 crowns. Best locations. As any foreigner, any expat would probably tell you is Prague 2, which is in Orade, uh, or um, Prague 1, of course, because the city center. Um, the pluses are that you can always talk English there and everybody will understand you. The minuses are that it's more expensive and you will probably not get in touch with much of Czech people there. What is a good location, I would say, would be uh, a Prague 10, for example, the Shrovitsa part, which is a really hipster area right now, so it's yeah. emerging very fast. Yeah, this is funny. funny part about renting a place in Prague, because people, especially when they are coming from the United States, they expect like, a, like plenty of paperwork, like a lot of stuff to do, because they usually have to have like recommendations. They also bring like recommendation letters from uh, their previous uh, landlords and like. They expect the same to to be like here, but it's not how it works in the Czech Republic. You basically landlords usually don't need to see anything. Basically, just like your passport or ID, and like you you can rent a place. What is important is to have money in cash. So probably money in cash are more important than any other documents. If you find a very good flat like very good offer online when it's like flat in the city center and for 5,000 crowns or something. Uh, be very careful because usually the, the story is like this, that you write a reply to the advertisement and you receive a reply back. Usually there are like two main stories. Like first is I bought the flat for my daughter. I'm, I'm from like Great Britain slash Greece slash Holland. And my, my daughter got pregnant. So she moves back to, to me and I just want to have someone nice in my apartment. So that's why the price is so low and like I just want someone to take care of it and make sure that it's, it's not like destroyed or something. Uh, the thing is that as stupid, stupid as it can sound, now they are, the, the guys are really improving and they... I'm not sure if they really reply, but the, the replies look like real. And they usually exchange a bit, like a few emails with you. So it really looks like... Uh, a real real. person yeah talking to you now they started even sending like IDs like real passport photos or real like ID ID photos like to prove that they are like a real person Uh, and what they also started doing is saying like hey like the classical story is okay but since I'm living here and my daughter already moved out also uh, I cannot like show you the apartment so please send me some deposit and I will send you keys so you can visit the apartment it sounds stupid, but especially if you're under pressure and if you exchange like 10 emails with the guy and he even sends you your, with like his ID, it sounds very realistic and actually many people like would like, accept that. Uh, and there, the kind of new thing is that they say that, okay, 
I of course understand that you don't want to send the money to someone you don't know. So there is a like deposit account in Airbnb. So you will send the money there and no one of us can touch it before like we sign a contract. That's that's bullshit. There is there is nothing like a deposit account in Airbnb. So just don't send or don't give money to anyone before you get the keys and before you see the apartment. It's kind of connected to what you should be aware of when you're renting a place because there are also two guys, I think, living in a flat and all of a sudden uh, someone came in the apartment and when when he saw the guys there, it's like, what the fuck are you doing in my apartment? <laughs> and it appeared that the, the person who entered was the landlord or the, the owner of the flat and he went to some like business trip uh, for a year. And he left his keys to the neighbor to water the plants and like just take care of the apartment. And the, the landlord just decided to take a bit of advantage of that. Uh, yeah, so just make make sure that if you're renting a place, that you meet the real landlord and that you like know who is the, the, the owner and that you talk to them. Another one, you should really check the contract as they're usually going to be in check. Like 90% of those contracts are going to be in check. But... Even if you go through a real estate, they will not, you know, they will not translate it for you in English. Uh, so please just, if you do it on your own, just have some Czech person to check it. Czech person to check it. Um, uh, yeah. So, because you can, whatever you sign, even if it's not under the law, it's valid. You can, of course, you can argue it in the court, but the court doesn't really work here. So don't rely on that. So really be careful about what you're signing. If you sign that your deposit will be gone after you move out of the flat and you sign it, it's probably going to be valid. So just have someone to check yeah. it for you. Random. Random. <laughs> um, just like maybe hello. Hello. Just yeah, like interaction. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah.